So we start with the OS flasher from Raspberry Pi and we put it on our SD card and I'm using Raspbian Lite for this because we're going to SSH into it. And the best way to do this is to use Notepad to create a file called SSH with no .txt or any sort of ending. To do this, we use quotation marks. So quotation, SSH, quotation mark. And then once we have Raspbian on our card, we'll just unplug it, plug it back in, and then add the SSH to the boot folder. So here we'll unplug and then replug in. Now that it's back in, we should be able to see the files in USB drive E. We have the overlays and then the boot. I'll go into the boot and I'll just add SSH to the bottom right there. Just copy it over. And now we can unmount and put our SD card into our Raspberry Pi. So now we're going to scan our wireless network and find the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. And because I'm on Windows, I'm going to use PuTTY to SSH into it. One thing to keep in mind is the port is always going to be 22, regardless of the network when you SSH into a Raspberry Pi. So we see Raspberry Pi Fios router 192.168.1.205. So we'll put that IP address into PuTTY. Login is Pi, password Raspberry. And you're going to want to change your password when you're doing this just to prevent anyone from being able to log in to your Raspberry Pi. So start with an update. Just to make sure we have the newest packages. Then we'll do an upgrade to upgrade the new packages. And I'm just installing Vim because I feel like it's the uh, so my favorite text editor makes editing the files a little bit easier than it would be to use Nano. So we'll let this load and then we'll, we'll set up a static IP address. That's the first step in making a home NAS server. We'll do this by going sudo vim slash etc slash dhcpcd dot config just conf and you locate where it says example static IP configuration it's right there a couple from the bottom and just uncomment all the parts that do not relate to Wi-Fi 6. Um, I'm not using Wi-Fi 6, so you can leave those parts commented out and you can delete it from the last line. The part after 8.8.8 .8 can be deleted. Then everything else gets uncommented and you set the IP address that you want. I chose .233 as an ending then save it and exit. And we're just going to reboot. So now you can see the uh, IP address is picked up and we're able to SSH back into the Raspberry Pi using the new IP address.
Now we're going to install our Samba software. Now it should be almost done. There we go. Just clear that, make it a little easier to see. Now we'll LSBLK to show the drives. And I'm using a 58 gigabyte drive. You can see it's not mounted, it's SDA1. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to mount it. And to do that, we need the UUID so that we can set the Raspberry Pi up so it automatically mounts. So if you reboot, you don't have to SSH in and mount your drive every time. So using sudo blkid, we can see the UUID for our SDA1 drive. Now we're going to use Vim again to go into the fstab file. If I can type that correctly, etc slash fstab. Now we're going to add the information for that drive at the bottom. And the UUID, copy it from the search that we did, remove those quotation marks. And we want to add the drive that we're going to use, and we're going to use slash cloud and will be NFTS, NTFS, and um, add defaults, comma, auto, comma, users, comma, RW, comma, no fail, comma, you mask. equals zero, 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 space zero, space zero. And we'll save that guy. Now we LSB OK, we can see that it mounted to cloud I already. Cloud. And then sudo vim going into the Samba file. You just go to the end and you're going to add this part to the end. Just the only things that you'll change are the things in bracket and the comment and the cloud and the path. So your path will be what you named your folder. Your comment is what you want it to say. And then in brackets is the name that will appear on a computer. So now we're going to just restart two of the Samba files. First one done, then just change SMBD to NMBD. Pseudo SMB password dash a user oh i got to uh get the password do it again oh i got to uh got to make a user and add it my bad so got to create a user that I used the username for. So just went through that, used the name that my computer desktop has that I'll be accessing the cloud from. So I made a user Cade. Then I go in and I add a password for that user.
for this password, I'm just going to use the password Cade so I don't forget it for this tutorial, just something simple. And then I go over to my network and we can see the Raspberry Pi popped up. So the Samba server is working and then cloud is there. So um, we can see that it did give us the file that we wanted, but to make sure that it properly mounted the USB drive or whatever hard drive you're going to use, we'll go over to, we'll map the disk. So go to Raspberry Pi, click on your shared folder, map network drive. And then we can see it right there. Then we'll go to this PC and we'll see that it is 58 gigabytes or uh, just about 58. So now we'll make our VPN. And to do that, we'll use Pi VPN and a DDNS service and WireGuard. So curl L HTTPS colon slash slash install dot Pi VPN dot IO bash. All right, should be loading and then you'll get a blue screen that'll take you through the installation process. We'll wait for the blue screen and then we'll see you when that is done. All right, there we go. And now I use dynamic IP for this. So I'm gonna block out my login information and my IP address and the name that I used for my DDNS, but it's fairly simple. You just go over to the dynamic DNS on the left of the page once you logged in. And for free, you get three DDNS um, websites that will track your home IP address and make sure it doesn't change. So you can do that with no charge. You just have to monthly confirm that you want them to keep doing it, which isn't too much of a hassle considering you're getting free cloud storage essentially. Then you're going to go into your modem, go into advanced settings, dynamic DNS, and then you just add one. It's very simple. You just put the name, the service, and then the user and password for your router. And then when it comes to port forwarding, you just select IP from menu. That'll be your Raspberry Pi. Select custom ports, both, and then the port that you want to forward. So it should be a little different on your router, but generally it's pretty user friendly. All right, so we'll just click through some of the menu options here. Then uh, for here, just answer no. Yes, yes, okay. And you use the space bar to move the little star asterisk. So I'm gonna use this under Cade because that's the name of the user that accesses the Samba file. Let that load. I'm gonna use WireGuard here. So I'm just gonna hit enter on this guy. And then this is the port that I'm forwarding. Just gonna type this guy in. And then for this, I just recommend using Google. Then we'll put a manual DNS entry in. And that is the name that you chose and used on your router. So like whatever you decided for that. And it's recommended to enable unattended updates just to keep everything secure and safe should there be any updates. So I advise choosing that. All right, so we just run Pi VPN add, and then we'll add different users, different devices that will be able to access this. And I chose WireGuard because it seemed much better for mobile devices, just a bit faster. And if you're doing this on the same Raspberry Pi, because you want to save power, maybe you don't need that fast of a speed, or you just, uh, especially now that the eight gigabyte model is out, I feel like you could definitely handle this on just one Pi and get good functionality out of it. So um, WireGuard's a little less resource heavy than something like OpenVPN. So now we added Cade phone and then a QR code will pop up, which will scan. I'm just gonna block that out. 
you can see PyVPN-QR brings up the menu of clients. Select K-Phone, and then I'll show you how to scan that and access your SMB server using an app. So here's the QR code, and we go into the WireGuard app, which should be on uh, the App Store and Google Play Android Store. So we come in, name the tunnel phone, and then turn it on. And you can see I'm not on my home Wi-Fi, I'm just on cellular LTE. Got that little key that comes up using CX File Explorer on Android. Add a remote connection. The host is the static IP of the Pi that we created. So dot two three three. Username capital C A D E and password Kate. And there we go. All right. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments.